Okay, so let's uh, talk about uh, forward kinematics now. Um, we're we're gonna relate to uh, sort of industrial robots. Okay, um, as you're gonna see, essentially we're gonna use this so-called Donovan-Hartenberg convention. Okay, uh, for our forward kinematics. But first of all, you know, just some uh, generic concepts. Okay, uh, we're dealing with multi-body uh, robots. Okay, and uh, in In most cases, if you wrote a multi-body robot, so you can basically represent okay, <coughs> a robot, let's say, uh, with a different uh, rigid bodies. Okay? And there might be a base okay, somewhere over here. Okay? So uh, in this class, what we're dealing with is basically we're going to look at the open chain Okay, kind of a multi-body. So, uh, for some robotic system, you might have a closed chain. Okay, and uh, when we're talking about joints, uh, there could be basically two different kind of joints. Okay, so there could be a rubber joint. Okay, or there could be a prismatic joint. Okay, so basically, the joint is ro rotating. That's for the rubber joint. If the joint is uh, extending or retracting, that's basically prismatic joint. Here, okay? Yeah. Uh, in typically, you know, we assign a certain kind of uh, basically joint uh, frame or variables, okay, to that rubber joint or prismatic joint here. Okay. Now, if I say this is an N. Okay, n number of uh, n number for joint. Okay, so basically the robot has n degree number of freedoms. Okay, then each joint you know connects two links, right? And then the total number of links, okay, is actually n plus one okay, links. Okay, so that's uh, for a robotic system. One fact. Okay, so we we'll remember that. Okay, now. I'll use this uh, Puma robot for uh, illustration in here. So this is the f uh, I'll give you the handout uh, in the previous lecture okay, from the, from the lecture notes. So the first link, okay, we always say this link zero, okay, and then it goes forward. So this link zero essentially is you know uh, this uh, trunk rotation, right? Yeah. And this, this is the second link here, yeah, but it, we call that link one. And that link one is uh, this rotation here, right? And link two, okay, that's uh, uh, we'll hang on a second here. Yeah, uh, the link two connected by join two, right? So the join two is this rotation, okay? Yeah, and this is link three, and then link four is this module here. Basically, that's the rotation of this. And link 5 okay, is this module and link 6 is this module here. Okay, So uh, the last joint of motion is this one. And there is an axis right here, okay, right at this location here. So that basically does this pitch. Right? Remember that uh, row pitch row? Right? Yeah. So this, this one is actually uh, row pitch row. Okay, So row pitch row. So this is what we call it's a spherical, uh, spherical wrist, okay? spherical wrist. So <coughs> basically, you know, uh, for any industrial robot, so that's the typical kind of structure. Okay, um, the mechanical design may be different, but you know, essentially, uh, they all stick to this kind of a Puma robot type of uh, uh, mechanism. So let me uh, give you an, another simple example here. Let's see if I have okay a two link planner robot okay so if i have a two link planner robot here so the robot can only move okay within this plane okay. and there are only two links uh, here okay. so how would be what would be the 
the notation of the link for this particular case. If uh, if we use our notation in here, so there are only two degrees theta. There are two joints, right? So where's link zero? So this is what the link zero. Okay, yeah. And this guy here is link one, and this is link two. Okay, now. So when we, well, I'll use this example here, this simple robot uh, for uh, DH uh, convention later. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now. <coughs> The question is, how do we describe basically the forward kinematics? As we learned actually in the first lecture, forward kinematics basically is uh, if we know all the joint angles, then what will be the any factors, position and orientation, right? That's forward kinematics. Okay. So forward kinematics basically we're looking for is right as any factor position and orientation. Okay. And given okay, joint values. Okay, yeah. So now uh, as I said, there are two, only two different types of joints, right? One is, so I'm going to use a QI. Okay. Uh, Q basically represents, it's a generic generalized coordinate representing the joint variable. And we can have a QI could be theta i or di. So we use theta i when this is revolute joint. And di uh, when this is prismatic joint. Okay, so now the question basically is, okay, how do we describe the forward kinematics, right? Now, forward kinematics, if you remember, okay, uh, there is one very easy way to describe the forward kinematics, which is, okay, the homogeneous transformation matrix. So we said the forward kinematics in the end is what we want is the position and orientation, right? That's what this is what we want in the end. So now let's say here here is my any factor here, right? Is any factor. So I want its position, and it's, this is a position with respect to the base frame, okay, or the reference frame. So let's say in this particular case, okay, reference frame in t typically will be the fr uh, frame zero, okay. So that's the frame that doesn't doesn't move, right? So what's the position? Basically, you you draw from here to the any factor. And that position vector represents its position, right? Yeah. And orientation. And orientation is represented by, remember by what? By the rotation matrix, right? By the rotation matrix. So you can attach a frame. If you can attach a frame at the any factor, in this case, right? Uh, this is basically, we'll say that it's a frame, well, there's a frame Z6, X6, Y6, Z6 attached to here, okay? So, if we can derive the orientation between that uh, any factor frame and the base frame, that basically is the orientation, right? So the the way to look at it is basically in the end you will see oh maybe T six zero okay. So what's the T six zero homogeneous transformation matrix? This R six zero represent is orientation, right? And then you have this D. Uh, let's say the displacement. Uh, I'll use well, I was just trying to differentiate with from this d here. Um, let's see, okay. And then zero, one. So if we can come up with this matrix here, this homogeneous transformation matrix, then we know immediately we know that this is orientation and this is a position, right? Yeah. So that way, um, it's pretty. It's pretty neat to have everything in one matrix, and that's the homogeneous matrix, right? Yeah. Okay. So the whole question is, you know, how do we calculate this, right? How to 
how to get this T60 basically. Okay. So you, you don't get actually you don't really uh, get T60 you know from uh, one shot but just looking at this one here but we can get T60 okay by going through this open chain like this. Say for example this is a, a generic case here let's say you have a uh, n number of bodies okay you have n number of bodies here and it basically when n equal to uh, 6 okay and actually when n equal to 7, 7 links n equal to 7 joints then you have this basically uh, the Puma robot here so what we do is we can assign a frame we can assign a frame to each link Okay, to each link here, okay, and also assign the frame to each joint here. So then we we have basically an adjacent between each adjacent frames here, right? Each adjacent frame we have an orientation, we have a position uh, for between for each pair of adjacent frames, which represents what? Represents basically the orientation and the position for adjacent links. Okay, yeah. So, for example, here we can see this is T0, T10, and between the next one, T20, and between here, here is TI. Sorry, this is not T20, it's a T21. And here and here is TI, I minus 1. And then the last one must be TN, N minus 1, like this, right? <coughs> yeah. And assuming Okay, basically remembering the previous lecture, from here to here, this is basically obtained by uh, a certain kind of a rotation and the translation. Then from here to the next one, this is obtained by a rotation and a rotation translation with respect to the current frame, this frame here. Okay, so basically each one of this, right? You can consider that as obtained by going through a rotation and a translation about the current frame. Okay, so you end up with the next frame. So ultimately, you end up with the here. So if this each one of them is about the current frame, and now we're looking for is T N zero. Okay, it's a T N zero. It's a position and orientation of the any factor frame, which is back to this fixed frame, the reference frame. So from the previous lecture, if you recall that, so what do we do? We have this post multiplication, pre multiplication, because it's about the current frame. So this is going to, going to be what? Pre or post multiplication. So you start with T10 post, right? So T20, Tn, A minus 1. Okay? Yeah. Oh, T21, exactly. Okay, so essentially, the, now you can see now how do I obtain the idea is to get the any factors uh, rotation orientation or translation or position. But what we really need to do is we need really need to get is the adjacent two links rotation and translation. Then we multiply them together with the post multiplication. We will be able to get the T and zero. Right? Yeah. So that's the idea. So then the natural basically bring us to how do we assign the frames, right? How do we assign the frames at a proper location? You know, you how do we assign basically the direction of uh, the x and y, z, right? Yeah. So if we can assign the frames, okay, properly, and we will be able to get to, to calculate the T10, T21, or Ti minus 1 is each individual of, of them, right? Yeah. So the question basically boils down to the next one here is, right, how to assign the frames. Okay, so the frames. Okay, yeah. So this is basically the next handout that I uh, give you to you from the previous lecture there. Okay, so we'll talk about. Um, uh, more uh, a generic case study here. Okay, so um, okay. so here is 
um, the green and the and uh, blue basically representing uh, two links. Okay, so this is the link number i minus one in general, and this is the link okay, i. All right, yeah, this is link i. So between link i minus one link i, this is connected right here by this so-called joint. Okay, this is joint i. Okay, so joint i. Okay. So at this joint i location, you will have a frame. But this is not frame i. I think if I talk about this, this is going to be the this is going to be the frame. I minus one. Okay? It's going to be free I minus one. Okay. So this guy here is going to be the joint I plus one. Okay. So this is going to be frame I. Okay? Frame I. So frame I minus one or frame I essentially means it's going to be X like this one here. It's going to be X I Y I Z I, right? Axis that you're going to label on it. Alright? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. So a couple of a fact, okay? A couple of factors here. So I'll show you how to sign the frames, okay? But uh, uh, a few things that you should be aware of is, okay, in terms of this, the way the frame is assigned is put on a power. Better is it's almost dead. Okay, so here's one uh, key sentence here. Most of the things are pretty straightforward. For example, you know, joint I connects link I minus one and link I here, right? So that's pretty uh, straightforward here. Okay, and joint I corresponds to this. But you should basically remember this one simple sentence here. Frame I, okay, is Okay, rigidly attached to link I at joint I plus one. Okay, so this one thing is sort of a summarized <coughs> uh, all of the information like this. So frame I, where's frame I is here? It's rigidly attached to this link I. So what does that mean? Basically means whenever the link I moves, and this frame that uh, which will sign the frame and here will move okay together with this link I. Okay. So now now the question is, can you imagine how does the link I wh basically what will cause this link I to move? What will cause the link I to move? By by moving which joint? By joint by moving joint I. What else? If I move joint, if I move joint I plus, basically, if I command there's a motion on the joint I plus one, will the link I move? According to the current assignment. If there is this is this is a joint here, okay? As I'm gonna later, this is basically a joint right here. No. no, right? Okay. So you're absolutely right. If I commanded motion on the joint I, this link will move, right? Well, you should also think that there's there are multiple links also in front of here, right? In front of here. So what will be this joint? This is joint what? According to this, this is joint I minus one, right? Yeah. If I command there's a motion at joint I minus one. Will this link I move? It will, right? Yeah. So basically when you do the simulation, you should bear that in mind here, okay? Yeah. You know, when you move a joint, which link will move? Okay. And that's essentially all about the forward kinematics. Okay? Yeah. So um the other thing is, right, it says here, attach link I at joint I plus one, which is it here. So now the question basically is, how do we assign 
the frames, right? How do we assign the frames here? So this is basically uh, as a title uh, of this uh, lecture here. We're going to assign the frame according to this DH convention. According to the DH convention. All right. So um, before we started to assign the frames that are here, okay, uh, I'm gonna basically um, lay down two important constraints regarding this DH convention here. Right. Number one convention. Number one constraint. Okay. DH number one. This xi needs to be perpendicular to z i minus one all right so which means you know when you when you assign the direction of x i it has to be perpendicular to the previous z i minus one axis okay that's the dh one and dh number two x i okay like this x i intersect the z i minus one cannot be zero. Basically, the x i axis has to intersect the z i minus one axis. Is that clear? Yeah. So you have this z not only perpendicular but also intersect z i minus one. Okay. If you if your assignment of the frames does not satisfy these two constraints. There will be some some pro potential problems. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now back to this assignment of the frame that are here, right? Uh, number one, that uh, bullet number one. Okay. What you do is you assign the z at i, the z axis. Okay, the z-axis to okay, uh, the z-axis as let's see as the axis of motion. Okay, so we only have two different kind of joints. One is revolute, and the other is prismatic, right? Yeah. So when we see the sign of z-axis axis of motion, basically. This red color line here is going to be your zi axis, whether it's a rotational axis or whether it's a prismatic axis. So if it's rotational, it's a rotation about a z axis. If it's a prismatic, it's a, a translation along the z axis. That good, right? So the motion is always about the z axis. Okay. So if this is the, basically the case here. Now this is a frame i minus one, so basically means this is going to be what z i minus y here, right? And this is going to be z i at here. Okay. And this is going to be z i minus two, of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And now it comes basically to how do we assign, once we get this zi minus y now, how do we assign the rest of the axis? So the rest of the axis, we determine this xi minus 1 at here, okay? xi minus 1. So xi minus 1 is determined based on this one here, okay? It is determined based on this so-called okay, common normal, okay, or this orthogonal normal between the two axes. Okay. So you see the way they draw these two here, you know, one is over here, one is over here. So if you uh, they don't intersect, okay, they don't intersect. And you can always find okay, a common normal between these two at here. Right? Yeah. And basically that's a line, okay, that's a line. This red color maybe, 
and that's a line perpendicular perpendicular to both of this z axis and intersect okay and intersect both axes okay that's the direction of okay x i minus 1 okay that's that's the direction of uh, x i axis okay so I'll write it down here yeah, because this is basically orthog orthogonal, right? So this this line here is perpendicular to both of this line in here. Okay. Not only perpendicular, but also intersect. See, this is my x i here. Remember the d h one constraint. What's the constraint? X i needs to be perpendicular to this, and x i needs to be intersecting this z i minus one. Is that good? Oh yeah, of course. That's D H one. That's D H one. Where's my D H where is it? What did I write it? Here. This one has to be perpendicular to Z I minus one. Okay? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. And this one has to intersect Z I minus one. Okay, so basically, what I will write here is, okay, if Z I and Z I minus one, okay, do not intersect. Okay, do not intersect not parallel okay not parallel can you imagine that that's that's what the, the drawing over there sort of indicating there right yeah so if they do not intersect they're not parallel so that means there is a unique right there's a unique common normal between these two lines the two axes hmm? Basically, that's what we call this skewer, right? You know, this this is they, they don't intersect, right? They're not parallel. They're skewered, the two lines, and there is a unique common normal between these two. Okay, so then in this case, that's the drawing like this. You draw from here to the direction of there uh, to to over there, and that's your x i basically direction. And then the intersection. The intersection point between this common normal and the zi is going to be your oi, the origin of this frame i. Okay, so this is this is pretty. This is actually a sort of easy case. So if they're not parallel here, then right, uh, xi is along the common. And normal, okay, like this. Okay. And in this case, this is unique, right? This common normal here. Can call that common normal line or something, okay? And O I, the origin. Okay, O I is the intersection okay, between Z I and the common normal line. So that's O I, right? Yeah. So same same way as you determine for X I minus one, right? But then you have to look at the previous Z I minus two. Right? Yeah. And this is gonna be your O I minus one. Okay? Yeah. Is that good? Okay. So once you have your x i or x i minus one determined, then the y i or y i minus one just use the right hand rule. OK? 
okay, to determine the last axis, right? So in this particular case, where is my y? y is going to be what? This is going to be y i minus 1 here, right? Like this, okay? Right hand rule. And make sure this is perpendicular, right? Okay? Yeah. Is that good? Okay, so now here's the, the trick that here is this. What if basically z i and z i minus 1, okay, parallel? Okay, they are parallel, but they don't intersect. Okay, but they don't intersect. So that's a special case, right? Yeah. So under what kind of circumstances do you see that case? This two-link planar robot. What's the nature between the two joints like this here? There are two Revlu joints, right? And both of the Revlu joints, this is going to be Z, let's say, uh, this is going to be your, your uh, first a joint Z naught, it can be Z one. So both of the Z axes are pointing in this case, let's say pointing uh, outside the page. And both of the Z axes are parallel, right? Yeah. So if both of the axes are parallel, then how many common normal lines between the two lines, two parallel lines? You have what? Infinite, right? Kind of infinite here, so you can draw an infinite number of pair uh, orthogonal lines between these two. Okay, then which one shall we pick as the x i then, right? So basically, you can if this is at i minus one, this is at i, you can draw any one, you know, basically out from here to there, right? So in this case, so theoretically, what happens is you can pick. Basically, this is going to be your OI, right? If you draw an, a common normal lines, okay, perpendicular lines between the two, okay, you can pick your OI anywhere along this ZI axis here, okay? So OI can be anywhere along the ZI. That make sense, right? And the consequently, your xi, once you pick your oi, then your xi will be simply just like that. Okay? Yeah. So there is basically always actually some sometimes it could always make you e make it easier with a proper location of oi if the two uh, as you're gonna see the dh parameter basically, right? Yeah. So even though you're allowed to put it anywhere along the zi here, but that that basically means what? That basically means you know if, if let's say if this is the rotation of joint here, right? The rotation of joint. So the the joint frame doesn't necessarily has to be assigned or located exactly at the physical motor location, for example. You see, right? You, have, you got a motor right here, but that doesn't mean that you have to assign the frame at the motor location. So that's basically a unique thing about the DH convention, right? You can put the frame anywhere as long as it's along that that I axis. Okay? Yeah. Sorry, what is DH standing for? Danovit Hartenberg. So it's, a song, it's two guys who proposed in 1950, uh, something like that. Okay, yeah. And 60. So. Oh, also, can you scroll back up to uh, yeah. a little further up? Mm. Where? A little further. Here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So. That's case one and case two, right? So imagine there's another case. What if Z i and Z i minus one intersect? Okay, and that's actually very common too. See, for example, you look at the Puma robot here. Okay, 
You look at Puma robot. The motion, right, for this spherical wrist at here, okay, lots of motion basically crowded at the one location, okay. And when you when you assign the z-axis for the motion at that location, you will see that, for example, there's going to be a z-axis along here, right? And this last joint here is rotation. There's going to be an axis around here. So they are going to uh, they are actually going to intersect basically. Okay. So for example, like the first one, this is your first joint, theta one. Okay. First joint. Is that right? And what is the second? Where, where, what's the where is the second uh, joint here? This is the second. This is the, the location of the motor, right? It'll rotate this link along this this way here. So this is basically going to be a theta two, for example. So you see, this is z naught, and then there's going to be a z one. So this z one and this z naught, they're going to intersect, right? They're going to intersect. So that's uh, also a pretty common case, right? If this is the case, right? If this is the case, then how do we assign our xi axis? Okay, how do we assign our xi axis? Or how do we determine this xi axis? And your your guideline is, okay, basically what you do is your xi, you still have to stick to that dh constraint, the one and then the two constraint. So your xi, okay should be assigned like this. So you can, uh, maybe I should write the other way. Okay, should be assigned as, could be assigned as the cross product of this zi minus one and zi. Does that make sense? Yeah? As a matter of fact, it could be both positive or negative. Okay, both positive and negative. So, what does that mean? First of all, you know, if I use this, uh, uh, if I use this expression here, will I still satisfy the two dh uh, convention? If I do this cross part, this xi is naturally actually perpendicular to what? To that, right? Yeah, and OI at here is going to be basically OI is the intersection <coughs> of ZI and ZI minus one. Okay, yeah. Is that good? Okay, so. That's pretty much you know all you need, okay, for under the three different cases, okay, in terms of signing the frames. Okay, uh, there might be sometimes those slightly different variations, but uh, this is basically what you need to stick to, right? What you need to stick to here. So let's go back to this uh, DH to this link right here. Go back to this to this link. Okay. So let's see. After we assign the frame, okay. And this is basically we got this is the frame i minus one, and this is the frame i here, right? The frame i. So how do we get from frame i minus one to frame i, okay, with the current assignment? Okay. So because ultimately, remember what do we want? We want what the t i i minus one, right? This is what we want. So let's look at this case here. You know, how do we step by step to achieve, you know, from here to there? Okay. So let's see. How do we do that? If I'm gonna from, to locate, you know, this frame from here to frame over there, right? So what do we do? So it looks like what do we have to do? We have to basically let's see. Maybe I'm gonna translate this frame. Along this z i minus one axis up to where? Up to this location, isn't it? That makes sense. So I can translate this frame up to here. So these two axes, 
they are parallel. Okay, parallel. Now, be careful with the, the 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 wording here. I'm translating along the current z i minus one axis. Okay, that's the step one. So let me write down here. So to get from frame i minus one to frame i. So what do we do? Step one, we translate okay, along the z i minus one. Okay? By how much, right? By how much here? By this much here. Okay, this much. So let's indicate this much di. Okay, let's indicate this much di here. Okay, is that clear? Yeah. So second step. Second step here. After translation, here is a temporary frame here, right? Here's a temporary frame. So then what we can do is we see the purpose is to bring the xi minus 1 to xi, right? The purpose is to bring this guy to here. So now after we translate up to this point, now what is the difference between this temporary x-axis and the final xi axis? It's only this much angle difference here, right? This much angle difference. So the second step, what we can do is actually what? We can rotate about the current z-axis by how much? By this much angle here. That makes sense, right? So if I rotate this one here, let's see, now this angle is here, right? This is called theta i, okay? Theta i. So rotate about the current z-i axis of theta i angle. So that's the step two. So rotate about current z axis of theta i angle. Okay, theta i angle. So after rotation, right? After rotation, the x axis become aligned with the final xi axis. Okay? Yeah. So basically you have a final x axis now like this. Then the y is probably somewhere over here now, right? So that's the new this is gonna this becomes the new current frame. Okay? This becomes a new current frame. Okay. So st we still need to basically bring it to here, this frame, bring it here, right? So then what happens is the next step is, so what, what can we do? So the next step is we can translate now, translate this red frame along which one? Along the current, this is the current what? The current x-axis, right? Translate along the current x axis up to this location. Translate by how much? We call this is AI. So translate this much distance, AI, okay, up to this location. So basically, the next step is to translate okay, along current x-axis by a i. Okay? So after translation, let's see, after the translation, you have your current x-axis. Your current x-axis is here, right? It's the same direction of your x as your final x-i axis. Where is the current where is the current z axis? It's not going to be the same as this, right? Your current z axis is parallel to the previous z axis. So, needs to be per parallel to this. That make sense? 
after translation. It's the black one, right? Black one. So the last step, how do I bring the, the black one to be the same as the blue one? What do you do? You rotate about the current x-axis by how much? By an angle between these two, we call that alpha i. Okay, alpha i here. Yeah. So that's the last step. So with this last step here, step four, <coughs> rotate about current x-axis of alpha i angle. Okay, yeah. With these four steps, you successfully moved the previous frame i minus one to frame i, right? By going through these steps here. So what are we looking for again? We're looking for this guy here, right? We're looking for this. Okay. So basically, this guy is obtained by going through these four steps set right here. That makes sense? Okay. And this four step, every one of step is about which frame? It's about the current frame. So according to the rule, if I wanted to basically put them together, here's the first step. So I'm gonna use basically post multiplication, right? First step is a translation along the current z axis by di. So basically each one of them is actually what? Is that each one of them is actually just a simple or the or the so called basic each one of the basic is called the basic uh, basic operation. Either it's a pure translation or what? Or pure rotation. Right? Each one of them is a getting basically either the first one is a pure translation. If it's a pure translation, you know, we have the basic uh, trans homogeneous transformation matrix, right? So I use a TZ as the pure translation about the current Z axis. So what, how much did we translate? We translate the DI, right? That's the first one. And then the second one is a rotation. It's a rotation about the current Z axis, okay? So I'll use a TZ and then D, uh, no, DI, theta I. Okay, like this. So this is a this is a pure translation, and this is a pure rotation. Okay, about Z. So those are basic homogeneous transformation matrix, right? Basic ones. And what are the basic ones? If you don't if you don't remember, what are the what what do you mean by basic one? For example, the first one. Can you write down the first matrix? This is a pure translation. No, not zero. So if I if it's a pure translation, the, the rotation matrix is actually just what? Huh? Identity matrix, right? And what's the translation here? It's translation DI along the Z axis. So what should I be? Exactly. Right? See, that's your basically basic uh, ro uh, basic uh, trans uh, homogeneous transformation. So let's keep going. And then, and then you have the TX translation and then TX and alpha i. Right? And alpha i here. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little confusing. You also have the T here. Uh, if you want to change the uh, the symbol, let's say you want a capital D or something, that's fine. But it, you know, basically that's what I mean here, okay? Yeah. Does that make sense? So if I, I'll write another one here. So the second one here, this is a TZ theta i. This is a pure rotation about Z axis. So technically, this is gonna be what? Cosine theta i here, negative sine theta i here, zero, sine theta i here, cosine theta i, zero, 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 one no translation, right? Yeah. Okay. So you can write down this two out of here. Okay. 
And in the end, you multiply basically the four matrices out, you end up with uh, what you get uh, actually in the lecture notes. I want to write that uh, here. Okay, the uh, homogeneous transformation we're trying to here. So basically, you end up with this matrix. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Ooh. So small. Hmm. Why? And look too small there. Okay. Was that good? Yeah? Okay, so tell me what does this three by three um what what does this three by three represent? Rotation. Or rotation. Or orientation, right? Or orientation. And this one represents translation. So basically here the here are the two frames, right? Here are the two frames. That T I minus T I T I minus one that we just derived represent is basically the orientation and the translation between the two frames. Okay? Yeah. Now uh you actually can switch these two action. You know, you can do basically uh, you can do step two first and then step one. So there won't be any change at all. Okay? Yeah. You can also switch the last two steps that are here. So essentially, if you switch these two or switch these two, there's, there won't be any change, right? Yeah. So sort of explain itself because of that, right? Yeah. Okay. So ultimately, you know, you, if you have a number of links, and then you're going to have uh, uh, a number of these matrices here, then you can just multiply them out, and then you will be able to get uh, uh, the um, uh, the system matrix, right? Yeah. So I'll use a couple of examples today here, okay, to demonstrate how do we properly find um, the DH parameters, okay? DH parameters, okay? But to summarize a little bit here, okay, if you look at the way, to, if you look at the way that uh, each one of these uh, di, a, i, theta, i, alpha, i, Put it together. Say one, two, three, four. Okay, this four here. This four is called DH parameters. Okay, they are called DH parameters. So let's look at. Let's see how shall we. Okay, since so mathematically, uh, so this is basically a i, d i, theta i, and alpha i. Okay, it's called DH parameters. Okay, so for example. AI. If I look at this AI here, AI is how did the, how did how's AI define here? So AI is actually what the distance between these two uh, non-parallel lines, right? Those two skewer lines. Okay, the shorter distance between these uh, non-skewer uh, non-parallel lines, and the shorter the distance along which axis? Along XI axis here, right? So that's where you see in the handout I'll give it to you, the summary here. So I said the AI is basically the distance from here to here along this XI. That make sense? Okay. So imagine this, right? If XI points this way, and this is ZI minus 1, this is ZI then apparently you go from there to there along this xi. So the ai that you get is going to be a positive number. Okay? Does that make sense? Right? Because you're walking along this direction by a positive distance you get from here to here, right? So but imagine but look look, uh, look uh, remember this uh, the weight the xi is assigned. Xi is assigned from here to here. 
and xi dh constraint. Where is the dh constraint here? Here. DH constraint, Xi needs to be perpendicular to the Zi minus 1. Xi needs to be, uh, Xi needs to intersect the I minus 1. But, you know, so you can always think is, okay, can I sign Xi actually pointing this way? Basically, you assign Xi point this way here. Will that be against the DH constraint, the DH conditions, if I sign the Xi to this way? Hmm? No, right? But if I assign xi to this way, to this direction, then according to the definition of ai, ai is the distance from here to here along the xi, then what would be the ai value now if xi is pointing this way? Would that be a positive or negative now? It will be negative now, right? Because you're going to have to walk along the negative direction of xi to achieve this change from here to here, right? Okay? So, you know, when you assign your frame, this is something that you need to keep in mind in here, okay? Yeah, there, uh, there are some nitty gritty things, okay, um, regarding the frame assignment. So, similar to xi is basically. the angle from zi minus 1 to zi about xi. So let's see, if this is the current zi minus 1, and uh, this is the, the zi at here, and this is xi, okay? This is xi. And they are perpendicular. So can you tell me what's alpha i value? According to this definition. It's the rotation from zi minus 1 to zi rotate about which one? About xi axis. So 90 degree, right? But is it what direction rotation? This is what direction? This is clockwise, right? So if it's clockwise, so what should I put it here? 90 or? You actually should be put a ni negative 90, okay? Yeah. So that's how we're going to nail down the value for each one of the DH parameters, okay? Yeah. Okay, so similarly, you have a DI is a distance along the ZI minus 1. And you have a. Yeah. Okay, so also I in this example of this. Yeah. Okay. So theta i is the angle between xi minus one and xi along the zi minus one. Okay? Yeah. Is that good? Okay. So um you know basically when you look at the four uh DH parameters at here, your AI often in time is called link length. Okay, so that's how much, how much, how long the link is. And alpha I is often called link twist. Okay, there's a little twisting there. Okay. DI is called the link offset. And the theta i is called joints offset. Okay. Yeah. So if the joint is a revolu joint, right? Is a revolu joint, then which one will be the variable? The theta i, right? And if the joint is a prismatic joint, then this is going to be the variable, right? So this variable means that's going to be the one that's going to change, right? If there's a motion along that Z axis, okay? Yeah. Was that good? Yeah. 
Okay, so I think we're kind of ready now to uh, go over a few frame assignments example, but I uh, just want to show you the video here, and this is probably the best video I can find regarding uh, the DH, uh, uh, DH convention. Uh, you know, I wish I could, uh, that's a pretty good one, so let's see, uh, if I can, I don't have it on this computer, but it's YouTube ones. How do you spell it anyway? Okay. Yeah, this one. calculation of forward and inverse kinematics. The process begins by defining the z-axis along the axis of rotation for equilibrium joints or the axis of translation for plasmatic joints. Since this is the first joint, the x-axis is free choice. For later joints, each x-axis will point away from the previous joint. The y-axis simply completes the right-handed reference stream. Now if we add another joint, we can determine the transformation between them. As before, the z-axis points along the axis of rotation. The dh parameters will be derived from the common normal between these z-axes. The common normal is orthogonal to both vectors, and is also the shortest line between them. The new x-axis points along the common normal, and has its origin at the intersection of the new z-axis. Notice the origin is not within the physical actuator because the DH parameters are only concerned with the motion of the links, not the physical placement of components. Using this protocol for laying out the reference streams, only four parameters are needed. The first of these, D, is the depth along the previous joint's Z axis, and the origin to the common normal. Theta rotates about the previous z-axis to align the x-axis. R is the length of the common normal itself. Most texts call this parameter A, which is unfortunately easy to confuse with alpha. Instead, calling it R is useful in the nominee, because this is also the radius of revolution for the new origin about the previous z. rotates about the new x-axis to bring z into alignment with the axis of joint motion. Now there's one special case when the z-axis are parallel. Because parallel lines have an infinite number of common normals, you can choose any d value you like in order to place the new origin at a convenient location, such as the center of a link or the tip of an end effector. So that's when two pair of parameters are the same as before. <coughs> Theta rotates about z to align the x-axis with the normal. And r translates out along the normal to reach the new origin. Alpha is already known to be zero in this case, since the z-axis must be parallel for this to apply, thus no rotation is needed. Congratulations, that's all there is to it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So Is that good? So that actually bring one thing here is, okay, um, would you have, let's go back to this uh, tumor robots here. When you assign the base frame, x naught, y naught, z naught, you know, z naught is okay, right? Z naught is where your joint axis is, okay? But what about the x naught axis? Because this is the base frame. So you actually don't have any constraint for the x naught direction. You know what I'm saying, right? Because there's no previous link anymore. No no previous joint. Okay? So your X naught can actually assign 
you know, to arbitrarily to any direction that you want. Okay, that's for the base frame. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the Puma, uh, if you have an actual Puma robot, uh, you know, the commercial software, the built-in, actually does assign a direction of x naught. So if I remember correctly, that might be the direction of x naught. But if I otherwise, maybe the x naught is actually probably this way here. Okay. And in the exercise that I we're gonna go through, so I'm I'm actually gonna choose x naught in this way here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, don't have too much time, but let's let's do a simple one here. Okay. Let's do a simple one, and then we'll do uh, more sophisticated on this uh, kind of uh, industrial robots. So the one that we can do is uh, we can do this uh, two link robot first. Okay. Let's do this one here. Let's see how can we assign the frame okay, for this uh, two-link robot one. All right. So remember, the first step is what is to assign the z-axis to the joint, right? To the joint. So you got two revolute joints here. So basically, your z-axis is actually uh, perpendicular, basically, to the page. Uh, let's see, we're we're looking as uh, uh, it's pointing out of the page at here, okay? Pointing out of the page, okay? And then your x naught axis. This is the first base frame, and x naught axis can be direction any directions, right? As I said, so so what do we do? We usually can just see this is going to be my x naught axis, okay? Then your y naught is going to be this way. Right? Yeah. And Z, this is Z naught is here. Z1 is over here, right? Z1. Okay? So Z1 and Z, Z naught and Z1, they are parallel. They don't intersect. And then your X1 axis, right? X1 axis needs to be perpendicular to Z naught. Okay? okay? To naught. And it has to also has to be. Uh, intersecting Z naught. Okay, so what we can do is we can basically assign your x1, right, essentially as the common normal, right, along from Z naught to Z1. So this is going to be your x1 here. As as the video actually shows you, right, the origin. If this is O naught, this is uh, O1. So the origin O naught O one doesn't necessarily has to be uh, right at this uh, joint here, right? Right at this joint. Okay. Yeah. And also the O naught and O one. As a matter of fact, O naught could be in this plane, and O one actually could be in a different plane. Okay. Yeah. But to simplify the situation, you already you assign this O O not O one in the same plane like this, okay? Like this. Because when the two are in a different plane, as actually was showing the previous the, the video there or the three there, when the two are in a different plane, you have a DH parameter which is what? DI, right? That DI will not be zero, right? Yeah. So if you want to set the DI to zero, then these two we set them in the same plane here. Right? So then your yi, y1 is going to be here. Okay, it's going to be here. You also need to assign a frame. Okay, for the last, basically assign a frame attached to the last link. Right? Remember, this is link zero, this is link one, and this is link two. Right? This is link two. So we also need to assign a frame attached to the link two. And just a similar, a similar uh, problem is uh, for link two. Okay, uh, there is no other link, okay, or joint basically. So actually, there's no joint motion at here, right? No joint motion here. So the frame that you sign for this link two, in general, the z-axis, okay, the z-axis that you signed, okay, for the link two at here 
pointing the same direction as the previous z axis. Then the x2 axis, right? x2 axis still needs to be perpendicular. So x2 still needs to be perpendicular to z1. And x2 still needs to intersect this z1. Okay? So which means my x2, I can choose what? This is my x2 at here, right? It's my x2. And then I can choose y2 over here. Does that make sense? Yeah? Now, I actually, we can uh, think about uh, something else out of here. Uh, I'm going to draw this guy here again, okay? So think, think about, do you, would you have another option of assigning this last frame, x2, y2, z2, by satisfying the dh you know, constraints, OK? Still satisfy the dh constraint. Make another plane. Make another plane. Well, well just what, what I'm saying is, beside assigning the frame 2 at this location, at the end of this link, can you assign the frame 2 somewhere else? Can you assign it somewhere else? You want to sign it here, right? Sure. Yeah, absolutely, right? Oh, what else can you assign it? Where else can you assign it? If you don't want to sign it center mass here, actually, let's just say you might want to basically uh, to make certain DH parameter to be zero, OK? Yeah, so you, so this x to y2, imagine that. Can you also assign it where? Can you also assign it over here to share the same origin, basically, as this frame 1 here? OK? Does that make sense? Yeah. Could you have x pointing whatever direction you wanted now because your origin there? You mean your x2? Yeah, and x2 be pointing whichever way it wants. Your x2 still has to be perpendicular to Z1. But could it be aligned with X1? Along the X1. Right, right, oh, right. I see. So. You have so the end of the joint, but it could be pointing in any direction you want. Yeah, actually, you could. That's right, you could. So if you. Oh, no, 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 you can't. So you're saying you're pointing this way. Except for shifted down to the origin. Oh, shifted shift shift to, to here? Yeah, there. So they're going. From there, going whatever direction you want it to be. Because that would technically be perpendicular to the Z1 axis. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. Would if you use move the origin over here. But you are, you'll notice some, some difference here, OK? Actually, if you do that, you cause a little bit of trouble to yourself in terms of computation. You'll see that, OK? Let me, let me, let me tell you why here. But technically speaking, as you, as you understand now, I can actually move the frame over here, right? As long as I satisfy the DH constraint. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so let me let let's go on to here now. Okay. So this is basically the, for DH. The next step is now we we're gonna set up this DH table. Okay. DH table here. We're gonna make this table basically to calculate the forward kinematics. So the table is set up like this. Uh, you have this link number. We only have two. We have two link uh, here. Link one and link two, representing. Uh, basically, where the two frames, and then you have the DH parameter alpha i, a i, okay, d i and theta i. All right, yeah. Is that good? Okay. So remember what do we need. We need t one zero. We also need what? T two one, right? We also need t two one such that we can obtain the any factor, position, and orientation, but multiply these two together, right? OK? So T1i is basically is the, is, is determined by the DH parameters based on these two frames. 
and T two one are based on these two frames. Okay, so let's see. This is basically the first rule here. Look at the two, the this first two frames here. What will be the alpha i value? What will be the a i? Will be the d i? What will be the theta i? Or meaning basically means alpha one a one d one a theta one, right? Yeah. So, what's the alpha one value? Alpha alpha value resort to your table. Alpha is the angle between the two z axis about x i. So what are the nature of the two z axis here? Parallel. So the angle between the two z axis about x actually is zero. Okay. And a is the translation from this previous z axis to the next one along this current x axis, x i axis. So translating from this z to this z along this x one, right? Along x one. How about how much translate from here to here? That's the link length, right? So let's say the link length is L1. Okay. DI. So D1. What's D1? D1 is the distance between the two x axis, two adjacent x axis along this z i minus one. So remember how I assigned the two origin here. I put this two origin basically. I put this all in the same what? In the same plane, right? So basically this O1 is not out of the page. So O1, O0 is in the same plane, in the same page here. If they're in the same page, the distance between these two x axis is actually what? Zero, right? See, that's basically the point here. If you, you, you are free to assign O0 actually out of the page, maybe certain offsets, right? But that That'll give you a non-zero di. That makes sense, right? That'll give non-zero di. Okay, so the last one, theta one, because you know this is basically uh, the rotation revolution joint robot, right? Revolution joint robot. And what is theta one? Theta one is the angle between the two x axis about this z naught, right? About z naught. So here's the thing now. Uh, you always start right your robot with the so-called ready position. So you might start a robot like this, but maybe you start, maybe the way you start a robot is actually maybe it's all aligned in here, okay, like this way. If you start a robot with this way here, then your initial angle theta is actually how much? Imagine if you assign, basically two links are align each other. Zero, right? Yeah. But if you started with this direction here, then actually there is an initial angle between these two, right? But in typically what we what, what we see is let's put a theta naught as the initial starting angle between the two z x axis. It could be zero. So um, the reason is because this is actually going to be your theta one is going to be so I probably shouldn't call theta one. Let's say call it theta one naught. Okay, theta initial angle, theta one initial. So your when you when you when you uh, plug it into basically see here right. You have this cosine sine theta. See it here, right? When you plug it in here, you're gonna basically actually plug it as sine theta one initial. Okay, plus a variable theta. Is that good? Okay, that's what you're gonna happen here, okay? Because this is a variable here. But there's an initial angle. So you're gonna plug it this matrix, okay, homogeneous transfer matrix like that. So it's necessary, given the robot, it's necessary to determine what is that initial variable value. So keep going here. If I go to the second row here, what's the alpha uh, two value between the two, these two frames? Zero, right? AI, L2, DI, zero. And theta, uh, theta two is the theta two initial. Is that good? Okay. So a uh, little running time here. Now, maybe Mark, you can think of it. If, uh, if you if you sign here, and then actually according to said, maybe you assign x2 somewhere, some other directions. What will this DH table look like, right? Which one is easier, essentially? You see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So often in time, you assign the frame to make your life easier, essentially. Okay? Yeah.
even though you have many other options. Okay? Yeah. Good? So bring your hand out here. We're going to assign frames to this uh, more complicated robot in the next lecture. Okay. Yeah, thanks.